One thing that's unique about the times we face now is that we're experiencing the world's first anomi culture. An anomi culture is a nameless culture, one where the social rules are so relaxed that you're mostly free to do what you want. There's a flip side to this newfound level of freedom though, and that is that it can be very hard to plot a course in life when you're figuring out everything for yourself rather than simply following tradition. This can be a great source of stress and is even correlated with an increase in the suicide rate. But focusing on the positive side, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to enjoy ourselves and to explore a variety of interests. With great power comes great responsibility. With the freedom of an Anomi culture comes the necessity that we live with deliberation. Can we use our creativity to invent some kind of subculture that really serves us in life? The possibilities are endless. What sports will we play? What health and therapy practices will we include? What food and substances will we allow into our lives? What pets will we keep? How highly will we value them? Will they virtually be our equals? What can we take from each of the various spiritual traditions that have formed over the ages? A little from this and a little from that. Is there a whole new way of seeing things? How will we relate to ourselves and to solitude? How will we incorporate technology into our social lives? How can we encourage innovation? What could our social events be like? What sort of music would get the best out of us? Will we be lazy and unstructured in our socialising? Or could we benefit from some kind of more structured events now and then? Will our socialising be purposeless play? Or will we focus on a common goal? A tournament between friends? Or even a purposeful endeavour like invention and Edward de Bono style conversations to enhance innovation? How can we bring more flow into our lives and more fun? What would happen if we deliberately developed our sense of humour? And for all these questions, how can we find out? Maybe with a little experimentation. We're used to holding social events that are themed in traditional ways, that have evolved, or maybe even devolved, to be the way they are. But some of those traditions have never really been thought through. These days, most parties are themed around classic rock, pop music, or dance or hip-hop music which is great, and that has its place. But it's a tradition that has developed over the decades. Those popular forms of music aren't necessarily what gets the best out of us. As the philosopher Marshall McLuhan wrote, the medium is the message. Did you know that the chord progressions of traditional blues music give rise to a particular lyrical content? And each style of music encourages a particular style of dance. And have you noticed that each music genre carries with it a tendency to worship a particular mind-altering substance. In blues and rock, it's mostly alcohol. In neo-soul, it's coffee. In reggae, marijuana. So the style of music holds the listener to a particular worldview. In the case of blues music, it's basically an alcoholics drama triangle. Listen as the blues singer changes roles from rescuer to victim to persecutor. It's the classic Karpman drama triangle. Don't get me wrong, I love blues music, but I wouldn't want to be confined to just blues all of the time. I want to try out other perceptions too. When it comes to subculture design, the possibilities are endless. With gradual, incremental improvement, who knows how we could be living. A beautiful subculture would catch on, like many others did in the second half of last century, as technology expanded and gave birth to new art forms, new styles of music and new kinds of events. Want to learn more about creative living? My book, The Artist's State of Mind, is all about just that. It's about the creative process and is a guide to accessing the flow state through mastery of your chosen craft. The Artist's State of Mind has received great reviews from experts in the fields of flow research and artistry. To purchase The Artist's State of Mind, simply follow the link to the Amazon bookstore. Or, if you can't afford to buy anything right now, send me an email to let me know, and I'll send you a free PDF copy of the book. I'd hate to think that a lack of money would stop anyone from reading the book. After all, it's about how to enjoy life with very little money. In return, all I ask is that you hit like and subscribe below. This helps a lot in improving my ranking with the algorithm, and allows me to reach far more people. Thanks for listening. I hope you find many useful insights in your copy of The Artist's State of Mind, A Guide to Accessing the Flow State Through Mastery of Your Chosen Craft by Jax Pax.